Hello, ladies and listeners. This is your hairless host, Joey Twasson, and welcome to the Individual Collective. This is a podcast about how people create value for others through their uniqueness. Today, I sit down with someone who is making his name in the Philippine film industry, Mr. Marcus Patterson. He was part of the cast that was awarded the first Netflix original film from the Philippines, which of course was Dead Kids. And his song, Best Wishes, has hit the top 30s in the Philippine Spotify charts. Today, we celebrate 12 years of friendship. We talk about his recovery from his horrific motorcycle accident. Uh, We pitch a new department of tourism song and much more. But before we dive into the conversation, I just want to thank the study by Enderin, which is where we're recording this podcast right now. The study is a space where you can find language tutorials, short courses, or even co-working space. And you can go to www.enderinextension.com for more details. We are also brought to you by Skillshare, which is an online learning platform where you can find classes ranging from film production to coding to graphic design. And you can get two months free by using the link below. Last but not least, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing so you can stay up to date on the latest episodes. Now, without further ado, Mr. Marcus Patterson. Hello, mate. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing great, mate. How How you doing, John? I'm doing great, Paul. Uh, You know, it's uh, sometimes in life, you just, that's that's our phrase. That is our phrase ever since years ago. Yeah, 12 years to be exact. 12 years ago. Yeah, you know. We've been friends for um, a decade in two years. That's insane if you think about it. It's a very long time. That's a child. It, that, yeah, it is. Could that be is your child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Hopefully not. <laughs> probably not. Probably, probably not. not. Knock on wood. Knock on all types of wood. But yeah, the first time I met you, um, you were this chubby kid who like, peeked his head into the grade five classroom. And, you know, you looked innocent at first, right? You looked like, oh, this guy seems nice, you know, fellow whitey. And, like, the day after, I was wrong. Like, you were just, like, you were, like, this annoying ball of energy that just, like, wouldn't stop. And, like, the worst part was I was always paired up with you. Yeah. Like, I was the good kid. And you were, like, the the bean, like, bully kid. And they were they would always pair me up with you. They would, like... Whether it be field trips or seatmates or group yeah. works, like, it was always Mark and Joey. Yeah, and I was, was so <laughs> annoyed about that, man. I feel like the the grouping. I feel like they they were like, ah, just throw the two white kids together. Yeah, <laughs> always, we're, we're always the back of the class and field trips and stuff. Yeah, they didn't want to diversify. <laughs> <laughs> just stick to the clans. Simple. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like the moment we kind of at least got respect for one another was the Justin Bieber. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a, yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> that was when I, I was like, damn, I should probably stop messing with this kid. Yeah, it's cause what happened was you were, you were sitting in front of me mm-hmm. uh, at the time, you were part of the seatmates, <laughs> yeah. and for no reason, you just decided, I'm, uh, we were doing a seat work, the teacher just left the room, and for no reason, you're just like, let's just throw all his papers on the floor. <laughs> so you turn around, you like swipe all the papers off the floor, and I was just like, that's enough. Like, I've had two years of this. Like, this is... I'm this standing is, up for myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is another level. So I got your arm. I, I put your head down. And at that time, Justin Bieber was like, you couldn't like him if you were a dude. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, say you love Justin Bieber. <laughs> I was like, I was going to have my arm back bent. I was like, I love Justin Bieber. Yeah, and then and then you stood up. And then you kicked me as hard as you could. Yeah, I football kicked you. arm. Yeah. And, I tried to make it look like that didn't hurt, but I was just like, mm. Man, I, I got hurt when you were like, yeah, when you, when, you, when, when you like released no sort of emotion. I was like, damn, that didn't hurt him. Yeah. So I, I, when I left the room, yeah, yeah, but yeah, that it actually really did. Hurt. <laughs> it actually really, yeah, you were a kicker, man. I am a yeah. kicker. I was a kicker. Yeah. So um, you know, you've been around. You've been. Uh, you grew up in uh, Europe. Mm-hmm. You grew up in England. I did grow up in England, yeah. mate. And um, but the Philippines is also your home. Yes, I can I say I just that trans- now. I just went to a different accent. <laughs> <mid-trans- laughs> just straight to English, you yeah. know, John and Paul. But um, did you ever have like a home identity crisis? Because, you know, when you moved back here, you were kind of like, I'm home. Uh, but now it's kind of like, I miss home. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, obviously moving here, thanks to you. <laughs> moving here was like a huge change. Um, but no, it was kind of easy. I kind of eased into it at Enderun. Um, 
maybe a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little too much. I kind of chilled out too much when I should have probably been focusing in class and going to class. Mm -hmm. But no, yeah, I, I ended up loving McKinley and like the dorms and like it was it was uh, it was helpful for like for you to be there and like you know kind of ease me in. Yeah. Um. But yeah, now it it as much as I want to say it feels more like home, it kind of it really doesn't. It, it's different when you when you grow up somewhere. Mm. Um. I just I just have this you know connection to England. It's just I'm never gonna have with the Philippines. But obviously, I love I love Philippines in so many different ways from England. So like they're. I can definitely call them my two different homes. But, like, when I'm here, I get super homesick. And yeah. you know that. Yeah. And when I'm there, I'm just like, can I stay here? <laughs> <laughs> Do I got to go to work again? But, like, yeah. So, home is kind of like wherever you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In a way, yeah. 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 But, yeah, England is definitely, like, your your number one home. Because mm -hmm. I feel like you grew up there in your most formidable years. Yeah. In a way. so yeah. and, and you really developed a bond, especially with, like, your football uh, yeah. teammates. Like, your, your bros back there. And and speaking of football, I mean, you know, when you moved here, uh, you kind of had to give it up, right? Because, like, you know, I'm sure it's almost every British boy's dream to be like this football star player. And you were you were a pro. Like people forget that you were a pro. <laughs> I forget, dude. Yeah, you forget too. We, but you we, you would beat me at FIFA 15. <laughs> Like, you were good enough to make FIFA 15, but you weren't good enough to have your face animated. <laughs> like, your name was there, but, like, they didn't, you know, this is not animate his face. He's not that good. But you're there. You're on FIFA 15. Yeah. That so, was that was, the, that was the main reason that I got a scholarship at Ender. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was my pull. I was like, Dad, come on. He's you got on it. FIFA. He's on FIFA. <laughs> I'm very, I was like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, he. Uh, what I wanted to ask you was, what was it like giving up that, that dream of yours, you know, your first love uh, football. It still stings when I think about it because, like, you know, you know, it's just being there and um, just having the opportunity to play in England, like my home with the boys. It, uh, football with my boys will never be any lower on my, my heart because, like, it's... Even now, I just think about it, like, it's just like, ah, oh, I just want to go home and kick a ball again, you know, like, way back in the day. Mm. Um, and moving here, yeah, I did, I, I did kind of have to throw it away and just kind of forget about it. But I don't know. I mean, playing for Kaya here and for the school, that yeah. kind of like it, it. It was like a it was like a tether to me. Yeah. You know, I was like, I'm still doing it. I'm still playing the game that I love. Yeah. Um. Obviously, the standard in football back then wasn't as good, but now that it's like fully FIFA recognized, like it's the PFL now. With the Philippine yeah. team? Yeah. No. Yeah. The the because it used to be the UFL, right? Oh. Okay. Now it's the PFL and it's recognized by FIFA. Mm -hmm. So um, it's the quality is a lot better. There's different rules. Like each team has to be actually where they're from. Okay. So, yeah. So it's it's a lot better the quality the quality of football. And um, if I could, I definitely wouldn't be in shape. But I'd I'd probably go back to playing for Kaya if I could. But it, yeah, it was definitely a, a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah, definitely. And I, I I kind of felt the same way when I was giving up basketball. You know, because yeah. we were both kind of like. You were the football guy. I was the basketball guy. We were yeah, both like, that was like our bro. thing, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like the pull that that kind of convinced you to kind of come here. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, literally. And so, yeah, it was hard, man, because you spend your whole childhood, you know, just thinking about it and playing the sport that you love, and then you grow up and it's like, could I really do this? Yeah. Or is this the right time? Yeah. You know. And I was also sort of, uh, I drifted to other passions as well. As well, <coughs> excuse me. This is the same But yeah, uh, and it was hard because it was such a huge part of your life, and you know, I'm sure you felt the same way with football, man. Yeah, it was some crazy. Definitely. Yeah. So, you know, your dad was a Vietnam War <laughs> vet, right? Tell me yeah. a little bit about you know your dad uh, having a dad that was in the Vietnam War. First of all, uh, it's cool. I mean, he's not. You know my dad. He's not really one to talk, but like I, I always just pester him with questions about it when I can, and he always corrects me. He says, "Yeah, I wasn't in the Vietnam War. I was in the Borneo War." I was like, "Yeah, but that was the same time period, and they're like <laughs> next to each other." Because obviously, like apparently back then, England technically weren't part of it, but they were helping out. Yeah. So like they just called it the Borneo War, even though there was no Bor Borneo War. So. Uh, so he never really says that I'm from the Vietnam yeah, War. He never says that. Uh, he always that corrects. Says, I'm, I, I, I was in the Borneo War. I was in the Borneo War. <laughs> And the funniest thing, like, his, uh, I remember him telling me he had, a, he had like, a nickname, you know, like, you know, military nicknames and stuff. His was the monkey killer. And I was, yeah. I, I, I was like, wait, Dad, is that, is that a racist, like, 
lying back then? No, 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 no. It was because I used to be the chopper gunner uh, for the, the the choppers, right? Obviously. And uh, he, they used to, like, shoot into the trees whenever they saw, them, they saw a movement. And when, they, when they'd go down to collect the tags or something... It, they would just all be dead monkeys. <laughs> so he just killed a, a load of monkeys. It was like, oh, man. So that, that name just stuck with him. Wow. Yeah. The monkey killer. The monkey killer. Trevor Patterson. Trevor Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like he had uh, a grand time, actually. You know, like, yeah. you, you said that when his chopper got shot down, he yeah. actually just like, he took a selfie with it, basically. <laughs> the first thing he did. <laughs> yeah, the, like, the it, he was behind enemy lines, for starters. And the, well, he, he said it was an engine failure, but... There was no tail on the helicopter. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah, dad, you got shot down. And uh, the fir- he obviously checked. There was no casualties other than the other... I think there was one guy that died in it. Uh, his um, backup guy. Mm. I don't know what they're called. But yeah, the first thing was is they radioed for help and then they took a selfie in this rice paddy and there was just locals behind him just looking. I was like, dad, are you sure they weren't... <laughs> they didn't have guns in their pockets or... But they got rescued two hours later. So they were just chilling in that rice paddy behind enemy lines for two hours. Yeah. A huge hunk of metal that says Royal Air Force. <laughs> like definitely not, you know. Pretty risky. Pretty risky. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's a funny story. Yeah, your dad is, uh, I feel like, you know, obviously you love your dad and, and he's like your best friend. Yeah. Uh, can you talk to me a little, about, a little bit about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm slurring this whole podcast, man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, can you talk to me a little bit about... <laughs> <laughs> Your relationship with your dad right now, in particular. Oh well, I mean, we're, we've always been the same, really. Um, he's just—he's <laughs> kind of getting a little more slow to like, but he's—he's he's getting on the Twitter scene now, and he's—he's he's oh. being really interactive, with, and he always sends me, "Oh, Mark, I saw your episode. Blah, it was good. I just didn't understand anything." I was like, "Dad, I don't expect you to ever understand the guy look, so it's all good." But yeah, he's super supportive, and he flies out as much as he can because he doesn't like being alone in England. So, but yeah, our relationship is probably better. Than ever, honestly, yeah. right now, because now we have more time together. Whenever he visits, he stays with me, and we go out and get beers and stuff. You know, he's the regular father son stuff. Yeah, he's such a memeable dad. He is. He literally <laughs> looks like the man from Up, and everyone keeps saying it. Oh yeah, yeah he does. except with like curlier hair. Yeah, curlier. I mean, yeah, but the glasses and the short yeah. frame. And when I was young and fat, I was totally that little. You kid, were right, right? Did I was, you have a golden retriever? No, uh, I had a brown. Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> what is <that>? <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, it's a Labrador. <laughs> Labrador. <laughs> Chocolate Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, uh, <laughs> you know, your dad was a was a pilot after the Borneo War. Yeah. Uh, he was a pilot for Cathay Pacific mm-hmm. Airways, and you know. <laughs> That kind of influenced you to also have a love for flying, right? Yeah. Why? Sure. Why do you feel at peace there? Like when you're on the air, because you always post uh, stories as well. Like I'm in the air again. I'm home. Yeah. You know, and like you, you really seem to enjoy just being up there. I do, man. Like ever since I was young, because uh, my dad used to always be away because he'd, he'd be flying for like weeks. He'd go to Frankfurt, Germany, and Hong Kong, and Dubai, and um, just when, whenever he'd take me up, it, I don't know. It's just I just felt home, you know, like it's just, it's a different sort of feeling. And that's why I've, I've always kind of like led towards the path of a pilot. And I, that's why like the armed forces when I was younger was definitely an option. Um, Cause what my dad did, my dad joined the air force when he was 16 and he, he got trained to be a pilot. And then he left after a certain mm-hmm. amount of years, became a pilot for Cathay airline for 20 years. Yeah. So I mean like that, I just wanted to, he was like, he was like, he was my hero basically. Yeah. And I just wanted to do what he, he was doing because he was, Living the life that I wanted to live, mm-hmm. so I just wanted to do. And I'm, where I'm at right now is so far from it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, no, but the pilot option can still happen still, later yeah, on, for right? Sure, and for you, sure. uh, you applied for that pilot school. I did, I did. So. Still waiting for an email. But are you sure? You sure they didn't respond? Did they? I That's don't know. What you I told got... me they, they. You said that they responded, and you 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 were in. Oh yeah, yeah. I got an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats! <laughs> Thanks, dude. I got an interview. Oh, uh, so you just an interview, not yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not interview. But what is that like? Is that a full time course? Like yeah, yeah. like four what, years or? Uh, no, well, it's it's. I'm gonna try and get my uh, my PPL first, which is a private pilot license, and then that's when I can start working on like my CPL, my commercial license, and I you know start flying on the A320s and mm. the smaller aircraft. 
Would you be content just having the private license, just having like a small plane and going and cruising Hell yeah. around? Hell yeah. Or but do you want to go the commercial? Route yeah, as I, well? for sure. That's like that's like the end game. But like I wouldn't yeah. mind like in my spare time, just have, I've got a couple hours, just take the plane up and just yeah. fly around, dude. Uh, yeah, oh, that'd be, be amazing. It it is really like peaceful up there. And if you think about it, like flying is just been invented in terms of human history. It's just yeah. like, it's so recent that we often forget like how great it is to even just be flying. Like there's a really good uh uh Louis CK uh bit. He <laughs> was like all, all these people like complaining that, you know, oh my god, uh, 40 minutes to wait for the boarding and then another 20 minutes when you're on plane and then finally and then, like he's saying, dude, you're on a seat in the air. <laughs> like, <laughs> how ungrateful do you have to be? <laughs> you couldn't do this before. Yeah, man. People do take flying for granted. Yeah, it, it's it's a luxury, but uh, it's a common one. So it's like just one of those things where yeah, you know, like like whiskey. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's this is a this can be taken for granted. <laughs> but we're enjoying this. Yeah, this Shivas, is really good. Uh, thank you for old. not sponsoring us, <laughs> but you know. We'll keep in contact. So, um, tell us a little bit about your upcoming acoustic album. Right, yeah. Um, well, I'm super excited for it because, like, ever since I joined the label, I've been begging for, like, at least one acoustic song because that's, like, my forte. I don't I don't really do the upbeat mm-hmm. hip-hop story. I don't know what it's called. Tropical bass or whatever. <laughs> it's never really been my... Hip-trop. My, <laughs> hip-trop. We'll, we'll call it hip-trop. Hip-trop. <laughs> yeah, that's not really been my thing, like ever. Um, and all my songs that I've that I've written, I've, I've written years ago, like when I started writing. Like now, I don't really write as much. I'm usually just on the set. But like all the songs that are coming out in the next couple of months are like two years old. So like they have like real stories behind them, and I'm super excited for them. Yeah, and um, I feel like when I listen to those acoustic songs, it kind of sounds like we're in your living room and like you're just jamming. Yeah, you know what I mean, like like the uh, homie sort of feel. Yeah. But I do feel like, uh, like props to Tarshi Records for even allowing you to, uh, you know, do a full on acoustic album. Like yeah. that, that just shows. It's like more of an the, EP. It's like yeah, five EP, songs. Yeah. yeah. Extended play. <laughs> I know what that means. You know, I the, never did. It's what? It's what? What is it? Extended play. Extended play. Yeah. Because back then, well, I forgot the. There's LP and then there's EP, right? Yeah. I don't What's know what LP? The L is. Long, longer, lo- lo- longevited pay- play, <laughs> lower, <laughs> just lower qualities. Just, just call low. it an LP. LP. Yeah, but um, yeah, I feel like Tarshir gave you that freedom to, you know, kind of take control of this EP and just, you know, sit, just kind of be you and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. just like you're there and you're you're in. Like, <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, props to Tarshir. Props to Tarshir. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, I love I love Tarshir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um oh yeah, Tarshir, Tarshir. Tarshir, get focused. <laughs> no, but like <laughs> what I love about <clears throat> Tarshir is like ever since I I joined, like Chris, he's always been such a helping hand. Like I never used to write songs before. I was just like Chill. I mean, you know that. Yeah. I've, I've known to play guitar for a while, but like a little bit, like cover yeah, you songs. You do covers. Yeah. Like, and there's some embarrassing uh, YouTube videos, uh, which we'll link on the description. No, just kidding. Don't, <laughs> don't link that. <laughs> don't worry, you're not going to link that. I'm, I'm going to have this taken down from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, every, everything about Tarshir. Now, like, Tarshir have started the year right, like with, with EP releases from, uh, well, actually, last year was Kiana's, but Leela's coming out with one, Better Weather. That's. Yeah. Um, Curtis Smith is on that. Yeah. And like I heard some of their songs at the studio. Oh man. Sounds good. Yeah, man. Leela's really popping it with the songwriting and everything. And Curtis Smith on oh, their song is a nice time. They're a good couple. They are, man. And it's a good song. Yeah. And uh, I feel like, you know, Tarshir is really growing nowadays nowadays because they've been around for a while now. What, two years? Yeah, I'd say yeah, two years. I signed two years ago. Yeah, and, and Moves is just a great producer, man. Yeah, he is. He, He's insane. The level of skill that he has you know just to even think of new beats and and new new tracks and yeah new mixes and he's just uh and he, he's he's a magician with the guitar <laughs> he really is <laughs> <laughs> man it's crazy like we, we'd be listening to a song and then he just he just pull out his mini guitar and start jamming to it like with some cool little, little riffs and it's like damn dude i wish i was that good at guitar well you yeah you're not that good. I'm, not, I'm nowhere near that good he, like he did classical guitar school 
What? Yeah, man. Like, there's like a super old embarrassing video of him like with his huge <laughs> guitar in his little frame. And he's just like... <laughs> man, it was like, funny. He has like a sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> no, him and Devin did the same thing. That's why Devin's like super good at guitar too. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, they're a good combo. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's let's go back to your motorcycle crash. You know, I, yeah. I know you've talked about it a lot, but I want to get your perspective on the full on experience because you not just the crash, but also like the three weeks being in the hospital. Yeah, you know, the waking up during surgery incident. Yeah, that was. You know, t- like bring us back to that time and what you were going through and what your thought process was back then. Well, at that time, I was doing the, the TV show with uh, Hens and Alona. Mm. And that was taking up a lot of my time. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I was kind of in a dark place at that at that point in time because of, you know, various reasons, relationships and stuff. And it just kind of got messy for me. And I and um, I just, I'd take my bike out like really late at night and just start spinning around the blocks like really fast. Just It just, it just kind of felt like a release, you know? Um, and then one night it just, got the better of me and I flew straight into a concrete barrier that I did not see. <laughs> like, like, dude, like, sec- first of all, I just want to, like, dude, if, you, if like, you're going to put concrete barriers in the middle of a road, make sure they're painted and not the same color as the road. I mean, obviously I should have seen it, but like my, yeah. he- my helmet was tinted and, but man. And also don't go that fast in yeah. Rojas Boulevard at like 4 a.m. Yeah. as well. That's also not a good idea, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Take the hit, bro. It was, yeah. it was also kind of your fault. It was 100% my fault. I, okay. like, it was 100% yeah. my fault. Like, yeah. I, sh- it was, I shouldn't have been there at all. I should have been at home resting and sleeping. But I just, yeah. for some reason, I needed to release. And, um, yeah. Um, the crash, I didn't... I remember last minute, I turned... I tried to avoid it. Um, and that's why my leg took most of the... Like, well, I took all of the all of the force. Yeah. If I didn't turn, that would have been my head. And I probably wouldn't be sitting opposite with you right now. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I, apparently I tried to stand back up after I and my leg just went. It was jello, right? It was jello, yeah. Um, so yeah, they took me. I didn't have my wallet either. I didn't have my wallet. I yeah. only had my phone. Um, so wait, where was the wallet? I forgot. Like where, where did it go? I left it at the studio. Oh, so it was but a, you thought Sean someone had it? I thought so, that's why. So I, I was like, <laughs> that's my first instinct. I checked my phone and my wallet in my pocket, and they weren't. Yeah. So I was like, oh. you thought someone stole so, it on so, the scene? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Well, someone did take my phone. I don't, but he gave it back for some reason. He was like, yeah. "Oh no, look!" I was like, "Yeah, I know it fell. I fell." <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was like, "Damn, my wallet's gone too." But Sean had it the whole time, so wow. I had no form of ID. So like, they were like, "Take me to the hospital." I was like, "Oh, take me, uh, yeah, just take me anywhere." Blah blah. Um, then they did, and I was at the hospital at like five six in the morning, and they were like debating where to get the operation. I had eight Star Magic people with me. My manager was with me, <clears throat> and they eventually took me to St. Luke's. Um, but I, th- the thing was, I had to wait three days for my operation. So mm-hmm. I was like bedridden. I couldn't move. And I had the, the thing that was like pulling my leg the whole time. Uh, just so the bones wouldn't like form off or something, I guess. <clears throat> so that was just a, that was really hard three days. But thank God for pain medication. That was like. Morphine. Man, yeah, morphine. That was morphine. Really good. Really good, man. Like. <laughs> like just remembering it is like mm. you're just sitting there yeah yeah man like the pain medication really pulled me through some of the most painful times well it's supposed to but <laughs> and uh day of the operation i was super stoked i was like yeah i'm gonna get it done i'm gonna get fixed um and then they put me to sleep and then next day i know i'm in a freezing cold room i've got this weird helmet on that i can barely see out of and like i can i can and i just look up and i just see my leg like wide open and then like, oh. and like dude the look on the doctor's faces like they were like oh shit like what am i not supposed to be awake right now and they're like oh shit you gas you gas so they they they, they I, I had a panic attack i was like oh they're shivering God. i was like freaking out and i feel like that broke the bone even more uh, uh. it was just horrible and um yeah, so they eventually got me to calm down and put me back to sleep. And then I woke up the next day, and they acted like nothing happened. <laughs> uh, they didn't even surgery, tell my right? mom. They didn't even tell me. I was like, Mom, I woke up in the middle of the thing. And they like, what, really? They said it was a su- successful operation? I was like, I'm guessing it's successful. I'm, I'm alive, right? You know? But like, I, I brought up to Doc Vera. I was like, 
<clears throat> my doctor was like, yeah, that's normal. Sometimes we uh, underestimate the the amount that's needed. And I was like, don't do that in future reference to <laughs> any other people. Like, it's not that hard. Like, was they they planned they planned a two hour operation, but when they opened me up, they saw that the break was a lot worse than it was. Mm-hmm. So they were just like, oh, it's probably gonna be longer. It ended up being a nine hour operation. Oh man. Yeah. So they, for some reason, they just it just slipped out of their mind to refill my thing because obviously I have enough for two hours not nine hours yeah so that's why I woke up and it was excruciating man it was like a nightmare it was horrible I, yeah. it was horrible because like I didn't have any pain meds I just had this stuff to put me to sleep so I felt everything oh my god I felt everything man it was horrible. when you woke up you yeah felt when I woke up it was horrible it was oh horrible man god. worst experience and seeing your own leg open yeah <laughs> dude it was it was like it was like, you know that scene from Shaun of the Dead when the guy just gets ripped apart and like you see his ribs and like his uh, man. I was like, mm-hmm. I love that movie, but I don't remember that scene. I remember the dooby 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 dooby. No, remember the guy that the the boyfriend of the dude of the of the girl, the boyfriend of the girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, he gets, he gets pulled out of a window and is. is the, oh, yeah, that's that scene, what it looked that, like. Yeah, it looked uh, like that, dude. It was horrible. It was weird because there wasn't that much blood when I thought yeah. there would be a lot of blood, but it was weird. It was weird. Yeah, that C- they got that CGI right, and that was early in the game too. Yeah, that was have you ever worked with CGI? Yeah, Disney. Um, my upcoming project with Disney. It's real, super cool. I just dubbed for it, and um, man, it's like Avengers type shit. Oh. Honestly, like, tell us about the the project. Come well, on. Disney. Um, Are you not allowed to say or? Good point. Um, I shouldn't have said Disney. <laughs> 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 Whoops! Oh, and I'm on live. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh well, I forgot we were even streaming. Hi guys, <laughs> how you doing? An undisclosed company, <laughs> <laughs> not Disney, not <laughs> definitely not Disney. Yeah. Cartoon Network. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's a cool project. This um, it's it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this project that's not Disney. No, yeah. you can't talk about it. I can't it. talk okay. about it. I can't <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm curious, man. Yeah, you know? I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> All right, so um, can you take out that uh, ticket that you have on your on your wallet? Oh man, yeah. I'm never gonna lose and this. And tell you tell everyone who's listening why you have that ticket from Hong Kong. Basically, I have this ticket from Hong Kong. It's a train ticket, and um, it's the train ticket I I purchased when I went to go see my hero Tom Mish. He's like my musical inspiration and idol, and um, <clears throat> such a funny story. I was I wasn't even supposed to be in Hong Kong. Um, what happened was, well, I was on the way back here from England after the holidays, and I ended up getting stuck in Belgium for five days because the flights was just a mess. And um, on the way back here, it was supposed to be like a one hour layover in Hong Kong, yeah. but because of the Dal volcano ash all over the runway in the Philippines, all flights were canceled, so I had to stay a night. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of my fans sent me Tom Mish's tweet. He tweeted. Hey, I'm in Hong Kong for two days. What's good? And um, <clears throat> I just tweeted. I was like, yo, if Tom Mish lets me buy him a beer, this year is completely made. And like an hour later, he just DMs me. He's like, so An you, hour? Wow. And, yeah, like, do you want to buy me a beer? And I was just like, I had a mini panic attack. I had a heart attack in my room. I was like, oh, do I reply? Or should I should I try and be cool? And I was like, no. <laughs> like, so I, I replied and like we planned out where to go and thingy. And this ticket is the one... I'm never gonna lose this. I should have gone. Nah, I shouldn't have got him to sign it. That'd be weird. That would be weird. No, because like we had we drank for like three hours and it was it was like we we bonded and we talked about yeah. music and he asked me about all the Netflix stuff and like he kind of stalked me. I was I was like, oh, Tommy stopped me. <laughs> and yeah, it was great. It was amazing. Yeah, that's so cool though because a lot of people, well, not a lot, but some people meet their childhood heroes or specific for categories. Like, but you hung out with them. Yeah, like, you like, drank with yeah. like Tommy and like you had a, a like a legit. Bro down. We did. We broed the heck down, man. It was unforgettable. Like, unforgettable. Did he give you any, like, uh, words of wisdom for, let's say, your music? Not really. He just, he was just like, you just keep doing you, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like the chillest guy. That's like, so Tom. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you do you, man. Yeah, yeah, just chill. And then we played darts and then we had beers. It was great. It was great. And I, yeah. um, I'm still, I'm still not over it. I don't think I ever will be. Like, it's crazy, yeah. And you you mentioned earlier that you were a you were a cover guy before, right? And you were covering a lot of Tom Mish as well. Yeah. Um, but when you transitioned to writing your own original music, like what was that like for you? 
It was it was weird because like I always kind of thought songwriting was definitely not my 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 niche. Um, my niche. <laughs> Your niche. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, Chris. Uh, Chris moves got me. He was just like, "Yo, dude, just shut up and write." And I was like, "Okay, cool." Do you have any t- pointers or like, yeah, just like think about something, write about it. <laughs> I was like, "Cool, man, thanks for the help, dude." Um, so I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and it. Kind of, it was fun to me. I, I I enjoyed it, and like the songs meant something because it ended up being like just me putting a piece of me down on paper, um, yeah. and that's pretty much all of my acoustic album that's coming out. Yeah. So yeah, writing is um, I I th- I'd rather call myself a songwriter than a singer now, honestly. Yeah. Because I, you're ne- you're never like I'm never gonna perform, like if I had a choice, you know. Yeah. But. Yeah, Miro in episode three, the episode before you actually, he he talks about you know there's. There's songwriters and then there's performers. Yeah, I, and I I feel like you do fall into the songwriter category. Definitely I mean, not a performer. Dude, some of the, the lyrics here are really good, man. Like, uh, Thanks, dude, no use putting my head down. Uh, the sun is shining now. Yeah, I can turn my life around. Mm-hmm. You know, that's uh, some pretty good. Everything uh, done. Can every be everything done can be undone. That was the that was like the double done. Yeah, the double D, <laughs> man. Double you D, got the double bro. D there. So yeah, I mean that was uh. Like that song in particular, Best Wishes, right? Mm-hmm. Best Wishes. I love how I just forgot the name. <laughs> <laughs> Best Wishes. Um, I feel like that resonated with a lot of people. How how many streams does it have right now? Um, I was shocked when I checked on it. It's like at 90K, I think. Or oh, 80? wow. Yeah. So that's your top performing solo song. Mm, yes. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we Woo is up there. We was like 250K. Oh James. okay. Yeah, but like Oh, but that's with moves. Yeah, that's with moves. Ah, okay. Yeah. But technically you wrote that too. I wrote so, that too, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um yeah, but best wishes. I mean, it just started as well. Yeah. So I, I feel like because that song has a lot of hope. And for you, I know like sometimes you're not hopeful. <laughs> yeah, I'm never hopeful. So like seeing that on you know, hearing it actually and seeing the lyrics and hearing you play it, it just made me feel like they made Mark's okay now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe Mark's all right though. I was just, I was just happy when I wrote it. Yeah, because yeah. you know, it was just, it was like, it was like after my accident. You know, like it's just like time to get up, time to smile, time to move on, time to get back to work, time to grind, time to write. You know, yeah. it was just, it was just a, it was, it's more of a comeback song for me and um, for anyone else that listens to it and relates to it. It's great. Yeah, it's a bonus. And you, you've always had that mentality to just. Turn off a switch or turn on a switch in your head. I yeah. feel like where where did that stem from? You think horrible childhood trauma? <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing, but it's true. Yeah, yeah, this is real. This is tears, man. Yeah, we're but all no. traumatized by something. Yeah, we are, and um, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I dude. mean, uh, you know, childhood tra- the tra- the childhood, childhood trauma. trauma. Oh, you slurred. The 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 slur slur count going on. Put it right here on the screen. (laughs) (laughs) I apologize for the slurring. Um, I didn't sleep last night. You're currently on zero sleep, man. Yeah. But you gotta gotta work. Gotta grind. Gotta get back to it. Grind. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes in life, you just gotta have a podcast with your best friend. Exactly, mate. Yeah. Look at us. (laughs) (laughs) Look at us. Who would have thought? Likes and everything. You know. (laughs) So, um, there was this song. Speaking of songwriting. We wrote the song. Actually, <laughs> I wrote you most, wrote all I wrote of it. Most, yeah, you, you gave it like it. one or two lines. But this <laughs> I song, suggested one or two yeah. lines that you eventually threw in the bin. I was like, nah. <laughs> I'm but, more like your performance buddy in this. Yeah, you were always like my like my kind of like <laughs> performance buddy in school. I remember like we would just get the top of the trash can, and for some reason we'd just all just yeah, yeah sit in a circle and we'd just be like boom boom boom. Boom. Oh yeah! Boom boom, boom boom boom, and we're like hitting it with a C two bottle. <laughs> boom boom boom. Man, boom, great, boom. great fire. That was weird. We were very musical as a batch. If you think about, it. we were the backseat boys. If you remember that, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, like all the tall goodness. people in a yeah, new. Yeah, Because like you always had to be beside me. We were the backseat boys. We <laughs> would always just be boys. singing at the back. And like Literally, <laughs> dude. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but that one song, uh, the Philippine song. Yeah. You know this. Might be the next uh, department of tourism, tourism song. Yeah, and I mean, claim it. Yeah. Claim I, it. I, we, I promised um, Idana that I'd actually put it online. So this is our chance All right. to sing it. Uh, no copyright. This was taken from uh, 
Kokomo, Kokomo from the Beach Boys. The Beach it's Boys. an inspiration from the Beach Boys, yes, but in the Philippines because we have a lot of beaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we can't play the minus one or we'll get sued. So obviously, we're just gonna obviously. Uh, do it a cappella. Yeah. So yeah, we'd have to. Um, one. <clears throat> I, I I'm Dude. pretty loose on the lyrics, but like I'll 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 stay along with you. Yeah, you know the locations, right? All right. Yeah, sure. One, two, three. Manila, Tagaytay, Baguio at Boracay, Ilocos, Batanes, Vigan at Zambales, Bacolod, Batangas, Davao at Victorias, Las Piñas off the South China Sea. <laughs> There's a place called the Philippines. When you're here, you'll understand the great Pinoy things. <laughs> San Miguel in your hand. Not an endorsement. <laughs> Watching ABS CBN. That's it. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be falling in love to the smell of the Cine Gang. Here at the Philip Manila, Tagaytay. But and it goes on and yeah, on. And if you want the full song, um, you know, let us know in, in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> It'll, yeah, in the comments, let us and, know. And uh, Department of Tourism, if you're watching, hit us up. Would, you know, that'd be great. We actually haven't finished the song, but you know, we'll finish it for you if if you want it. What was the end? Ooh la la, <laughs> Ooh, Tony <laughs> Gonzaga. <laughs> yeah, ooh la la, Tony Gonzaga. Yeah, we we have to update that. Yeah, we definitely yeah. do. Yeah. Liza, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we gotta figure that out. Yeah, yeah. So um, I found this weird trend like with you and and your acting. It's kind of funny. Like in uh in Cargo, you were the son of a drug lord mm. who was kidnapped mm. and beaten up. Yeah. In Dead Kids, you were the son of a drug lord, <laughs> <laughs> kidnapped. And beat it up. Uh-huh. Like, what is up with that trend, man? I, I think know. it also high, right? That movie high, high. Uh, that TV show. Weren't you also kidnapped? I was and kidnapped. beat it up. And beat it up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you were in the son of a drug light. Yeah, I wasn't the son of a drug. That, that changed then. That, changed then. <laughs> that came later. That came later. I was like, you know, make him a son of a drug lord. He looks yeah. like the type, you know. Yeah. But why do you think? Like, why are you always chosen for these parts of like? Like, are you just really good at getting beaten up? Like, I what don't is know. This? I, maybe I just have a super punchable face that like the management are just like, you know what? Let's let's beat him up in this film. <laughs> you know, it's this. He's handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> Take advantage of him now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But like, no. I mean, I love doing. I I, I express to my management and like um, how I how I love doing like action things and you know out of the box sort of uh, of roles. And um, yeah, it's just, I don't know why it's become a trend, but yeah, I, I don't mind it. I, I really enjoy playing the bad guy. I enjoy yeah. playing the good guy. I enjoy playing the, the victim. I enjoy mm-hmm. playing the bully. I mean, I enjoy playing everything, really. It's but just, what, what has been your favorite role so far? Definitely Dead Kids. Yeah. Chuck. Okay. Chuck Santos was, um, that was the most fun I've had on set because, like, my, my character was pretty much improv. Mm. A lot of the scenes was Im- improvisation. Um, just completely being a, a complete douche mm. to the guy, to the guys, and um, I. That's it was natural. It was na- really? <laughs> <laughs> no. It was, I, I I definitely immersed myself into the character of Chuck Santos and um, just channeled a douche. Just yeah. and and it was it was so much fun to me. Dude, what you did to Santa Maria and that one scene where you like threw the papers. <laughs> that's exactly what you did to me in Grade Five. Yeah, bro. it was. I was, like, was. I was like Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I feel Santa Maria. <laughs> But what was it like, um, you know, working with Mikael? Red? Yeah, Mikael, Mikael Red. Not Michael. No. Mikael. Mikael Red. Mikael Red, yeah. What was it like working with him? An honor, privilege. He was. He's a wonderful visionary. He's an artist. He really is. And um, just seeing, like, how we treated the set and how we... Because this is his movie with his brother, Nicholas. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was, it was. it's a story by the Red Brothers. And mm-hmm. uh, Nick wrote it and Derek Mick directed it. Um, and it was, it was, it was great just... And the fact that we we only did it in ten days was wow. yeah ten days. Um, it was great. Uh, he, he's a very quiet director. He doesn't really get mad. Like if it if it's like four or five a.m. already and like we need to get scenes done, he's just like focus now, focus now. That's it. Really? He'll never he he never like scream on set or something. Yeah, he's a calm he's a calm director. Mm. And he's been around for a while, right? Because his dad was also his dad was a director. Yeah, so it runs in the blood. Yeah. Yeah. And he was well. He was a. Uh, he mentioned once in a an interview I was while well, doing research for you. <laughs> um, he he mentioned that 
the dead kids cast, like everyone in the cast, even the crew members, were actually younger than him. And he's 28. Yeah. So this group of people, everyone younger than 28 except for him, made it to, you know, Netflix. They got, you guys got produced by Netflix yeah. as such a young group of people, right? Yeah. First of all, what was that like? Um, but also, what was it like in particular working with such a young crew? Refreshing, for sure. Because we just had a we had a we had a ton of fun on set. I remember our last day, <clears throat> our last day. Um, it was like the part we had, I was doing some party scenes with with Sue, and um, I think we were like on top of a car, like we were pretending to drink. Um, and Derek was like, uh, Derek Michael, the the director of photography. He he was already running around with a bottle of tequila, just giving shots to all of the, everyone behind the camera. And like, it, man, it was it, it was good to work with a, a bunch of guys that you could just call like homies, because yeah. like you know everyone's just trying to work towards a common goal, like making a beautiful film, and that's what we all did. It was great. Yeah, and you know that movie actually was great because it, it seemed like you all were having fun. You know, while 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 you were in the cast, you know, while you were you know. Filming, yeah, <laughs> not in the cast. You're already <laughs> in the cast, but um, yeah. I mean, I feel like, and wasn't it his passion? Not passion project, but it was his side thing as, as well. Doctor, Doctor yeah. Red, uh, <laughs> Direct, <laughs> Red. Direct Red. Uh, it was his side hustle, right? Not hustle, but it was his side gig. It wasn't yeah. his main thing at the time. No, he was he was working on he was working on two projects at the same time. He was working on Block C, which just came out. Oh yeah. Um, so he'd he'd come back from like a twenty four hour taping day and just go straight to our set and just wow. like grind and grind and grind. There was one taping day for us that we started at twelve midnight. We started at twelve midnight and we just grinded throughout the whole night into the morning and finished at three p.m. Wow. And um, it was just, it was so fun. Like because just with the boys, we just have that camaraderie, and um, <laughs> it was just it was just a lot of fun. It's a lot of like getting drunk on set. <laughs> yeah, quite literally for a, for a lot of the guys. Yeah. Yeah. But that's good though. I mean, I feel like it relieves a lot of tension sometimes, and especially like for that particular movie, it was kind of necessary because you you guys in high school, you guys are drinking. Yeah, you guys just freaking kidnap someone. So, yeah. you know, and there was that club scene. That was a, that was a good scene. That was a good. Scene. That was a good scene. And after a good. Yeah, the Vance, Vance, bro. Yeah, Vance is something else. Those of them last night. Uh, he's the whole cast, man. The whole cast was yeah. such. It was such a such a well casted film. Yeah. Explain the brotherhood after that film because, like, do you think you guys would be this close if it wasn't a Netflix produced film? I think that you know when I saw you guys together, like we watched it a couple times in your place. Uh, you know, you had that chemistry and that bond. But was it the success of you know being this Netflix that kind of bonded things together, or were you already kind of that close coming into it? It was definitely what brought us closer. Like after filming, was definitely when. Um, well, actually, no. We we were we were close already. We, we'd go to we'd we'd hang out. We'd drink with Derek and everything. The whole prod, everyone behind the cam too. Um, but what brought us a lot closer together was the Netflix premiere itself. Ah, uh. because like we were just in awe, man. And there's like I have a video on my phone of like um, just when the lights come off and like the first thing you hear is the when you see is the, the Netflix logo coming up and it's such a nice animation. Yeah, and like all of us are just like sitting there like, dude, this is our. Film, man. Yeah. And like you just, the whole crowd of standing ovation after the movie, man. It was, uh it was something else. Like we all just felt like we just needed to embrace each other and we did. It, it was just such a, yeah. Oh, it was it's a, a big it's, deal, man, yeah. because it kind of gives hope. And the fact that you guys were so young, it gives hope to like, oh, wow, the next generation is going to bring it. Yeah, for you know, sure. Like, yeah. All these guys, Khalil Ramos, Jans, uh, Vance, and <laughs> Jans. Was this the right name? <laughs> Jan and Vance, yeah. That's what I said. You said Jan, dude. I said Jan and Vance. I just said them, <laughs> you, you know, sequentially, the and Jan, yeah. <laughs> it's their new love team. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you guys were so young, and I feel like that that gave a lot of hope to the film industry in the Philippines. Yeah. What, what, what do you have to say about that? Um, I mean, there's already a bunch of visionaries in the films that are coming out now, like indie films. Ever like ages ago. Like years ago already, like there's some good stuff coming out, you know, and uh, young young people are, I don't know, man. The next generation's definitely got it in the bag. It's just it's just nice to see the Philippine level of like artistry when it comes to movies just right leveling up. Like it's not the same old thing. Like it's not, uh, 
one girl, two guys, who's she gonna pick? Oh no. Or you know, yeah, like you know, those like the the staple, like, you know, the other woman. Or like, yeah. you know, like you know, like affairs. Like yeah. that's like that's like a staple for some reason. Because yeah. people love watching. It works. It, it, works. it it's, works. It's it's a good marketing yeah. strategy. Just don't fix what's not broken. Yeah. But like it's it's good to see that other people are thinking outside the box and like creating all these new things and it's just yeah. it's great. People are like pushing the envelope. Yeah. And that's needed for you know, any industry. And I feel like in your perspective, I feel you, you as a young actor, you can influence that through your acting as well, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you you can also turn down roles that are also kind of cheesy and all that. Yeah, yeah. And I you mean, can also accept, like, you know, create a standard for yourself where, you know, I only want to do films that I actually believe in or, or that are actually, that I think will be really good. Yeah. But at the same time, you kind of have to make money as well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's true. So, I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't turn down any project. Uh, any project? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. At all? At all. I mean, like... Why not? Because, dude, that's that's the beauty of uh, of growing as an actor. You gotta you gotta take these roles that you're yeah. not used to. You gotta you gotta learn how to adapt, and and that's 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 part of the growth for me. Yeah. And and I really enjoy experiences that I, I'm not used to. Yeah. You know, like my recent MMK. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to bring that yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, uh, it was it was hard on set. You know, but yeah. like for the first day. It was kind of awkward and weird because like that's my mom's. I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my homie's mom. Yeah, dude, yeah like yeah, you know. Yeah. But like, but like we, we we've hung out before with with Jago and stuff. So it's like we had that we already knew each other sort of thing out of the way. It was just all the romantic scenes and you know the looking into each other's yeah. eyes that you know. But that that was a that was a huge. I really enjoyed it. Eventually, like uh, by the end of the day, by the end of the third day, it was just like okay. Man, this is this is fun. I like I like I like new challenges, and it was definitely one of those. This is M M O K. But yeah, that must have been hard though, because it's also just naturally weird to you know just yeah be with the person a significant a thirty four year age gap. Yeah, but she wasn't that much older in real life, right? In real life, yes, that was. Oh, that's her real life. That's her real I life. You're with the story. No, no, the oh, story. Wow. The story is is real life. Yeah, but uh, yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh, you're you talking about the story that it was based off? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's a huge, huge gap, man. So like man. when when uh, the guy I portrayed was Danny, when he was 19, he met the girl, and she was 54. Wow, 19. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd be like. She could have been like thirty four and holding him like one day. Yeah, like live <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the baptism. Man. Exactly, <laughs> like thirty four more years. <laughs> yeah. Sets a timer. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, they they visited us on set. They uh, they they saw us on set. It was great. It was. Um, yeah. they, I really saw that. Like they re- they're really in love. Like, yeah. The way he talks about her, the way he looks at her, it was yeah. just, it was like wow. Like, <laughs> kudos, dude. Like, yeah. honestly, that they have such a love loving relationship it really looked genuine and yeah but my favorite part of the whole thing is at the end <laughs> when <laughs> they flash like th- them as a couple and then you guys <laughs> it's just like as marv albert would say way off who's <laughs> 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 this white dude just, yeah. this, like, <laughs> you just pop in that picture <laughs> but overall amazing job you know as thanks man that was a great show and um i feel like you are stretching yourself um as an actor so how has your view on acting change since you've been in the industry for a while and you've had various roles um it's changed because like i I remember the first time i started kind of getting into it uh Mm -hmm. like three years ago when i first signed up with star magic i was doing the workshops the acting workshops with Derek ryan and a couple of my friends um and i really wasn't feeling it man like on like in in the in the workshop i really wasn't feeling it like it wasn't me like i'm used to just football and and friends that's it and like i'm not it was definitely a step up in my comfort zone um but like i I always say this like workshops can never prepare you from for the moment that you're actually on the set Mm. with the cameras rolling and a bunch of people behind the cameras waiting for you to do it right Mm. and to do it well you know that's a that's that's a lot of pressure yeah it's a huge pressure it's huge pressure you know like like i want i want these guys to go home so like i'm trying to do my best and like i remember my first project uh, which was high. Um, that was a very demanding role because I was in every sequence. There was a lot of action sequences, and I loved it. But the first couple scenes, like, I just felt so awkward, and I felt like I was like under a spotlight, which I was. And everyone's like waiting for me to do it right, and I just, I just, 
I had it was so hard for yeah. me. Yeah. But like ever since then, ever like ever since I've kind of just felt more comfortable and like um, more expressive. Um, every film, every show, every acting experience that I've done, I've just grown to love it more. Oops, I've just grown to love <laughs> it more. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I love it now. I, I love it so much. It's it's so fun to me, and it's yeah. It, it seems that you've actually uh, your love for acting has grown. Yeah, because at first you kind of had no option. Like after leaving Endron, like this was like <laughs> this, is it. this is it. Like you had no choice. All or nothing, dude. Yeah. But at, like props to Kui Allen, the visionary who <laughs> believed in in you and, and yeah. believed in the talent that you had, even though you didn't even take a single workshop yet, or mm-hmm. maybe you did back then. I'm not sure. No. But how did you overcome that? Was it just repetition and just, you know, getting better at the craft? Do you study the craft now? Like when you watch movies, is it different different for you? Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, like, I feel like I'm always studying it when I'm observing other actors and when mm. I'm, when I'm, when I'm playing a role, I'm always studying it. But it's, 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 it like, ah, uh, where am I at? <laughs> where am I at right now? <laughs> it's the Shivas. It's the Shivas. <laughs> Yeah, no, but like every time I'm on set with a new film, I'm like, I I I don't really study because like I remember in workshop they were like, okay, read this book. It's yeah. you know it's by Ivana Chubbuck. Like, if you read this, you'll be a good actor. You know, you'll know what to do. And yeah. like, oh, there's all these all like nuances and doings and stuff. Like, I I feel like those will come. Like, yeah. you don't got to study that. Like, if you really put yourself into the character's shoes, like, you if you understand your character, like all the nuances and all that, that'll come eventually. You know, mm-hmm. um, so like. I That's like method acting. Yeah, I'm more of that. I don't like the whole, mm, like, read a book and you'll be solved. Like, I don't believe yeah. in that. Like, you really have to dive into each role and, and prepare for it yourself and, like, see what you have in common with the character. Work towards that. And, you know, ah. Yeah. And, like, that's that's how I would do it. So once you find the similarities, yeah, you sort of double down on that? Or, like, wh- what is your take on it? Like, how do you approach it? Uh, well, obviously, obviously, there's always a... Like a part of me that's in every character, um, so I just I just say like when I'm like thinking about a scene like what would I do, and mm. then like what would I th- what do I think the character he would, would do? do, and then I kind of find a middle ground like okay this I can do it like this I can do it like that I can uh. I can play it more him I can kind of go both ways, so yeah I, I always kind of find the middle ground and I work from there. That's a good way to see it, and I do see that in your acting because like for example like Chuck Santos I'm like whoa yeah. that's Mark, <laughs> but like also it's Chuck Santos yeah you know yeah Chuck. Chuck, the, yeah, Chuck, <laughs> Chuck fucking Santos, dude. Yeah, Chuck yeah. fucking Santos. Yeah, he's sorry, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> she watches these, man. Sorry, yeah. dude. Sorry, Lola. <laughs> sorry, Grandma. <laughs> sorry, Grandma. But yeah, um, that's that's a cool way to see it because you know I always thought you know just being an observer, it was like it was a mindset shift. Like for example, I'm Joker. You know, like you just d- dive into the role and yeah. you just sort of try to create uh, try to live a life that joke joker would live right? mm-hmm. and try to think the same way he would live but it, i never heard of someone say uh you know find the middle ground that, that's kind of new yeah good uh good teaching you got there Mr. thanks man pattison thank you mate yeah. <laughs> so um what are the shortcomings of our industry today let's start with uh let's start with music because that's one of the industries you're in yeah um what are for you what are the shortcomings of the industry today and in your opinion what can be done about it oh um shortcomings well uh it's quite unfortunate how there's there's a there's a there's a label called the massa and like people have to cater their mm. music towards that market like i feel like music it's a, it's a form of art it's creativity and if you if you if you're just making it to cater to a certain a group of people then is it really like what is it it's just it's just like here, here's here's what you want, mm-hmm. and it's like people want it, people want to hear something new, and I feel like yeah. it's 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 it can be changed so easily. Just yeah. just like up the level in music, up the level yeah. in the chords used, up the level in the in the lyrics and stuff. But it's just they're so stuck in the ways of you know it's it's it works, yeah. it works, it does get the views. And what's annoying is you really have to be a, a pop star performer to actually like get revenue from from music, mm-hmm. and um, that's I mean there's so many good like. Uh, Artists out now, like, uh, like, four spades. First of all, like, mm. well, they're they're pretty mainstream now, but yeah, back then and well, now unique is and Ben and Ben, all these guys are making really good music that even the mass are loving, and it's not catered to the mass, you know. So yeah. pe- people can just relate to good music, and you know, it, it doesn't have to be the old cheesy. Yeah, you know, I feel I feel like 
they also like the quote unquote masa or even just general audience, they don't know what they don't know yet. Yeah. Like they don't know that they could like that type mm-hmm. of music because they've never heard it before because exactly. they've just been been spoon fed all these the same genres that has been working in the past. Yeah. Right? It's crazy, man. It is. It is. But I mean the music industry is growing, man, and I'm 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 loving I'm loving the change in in everything, and um, I'm not really that into the whole I'm not really in the circle with mm-hmm. the whole music thing. I'm just kind of like keeping to my acting at the moment, but yeah, I'm I'm loving what Taisha is doing, as yeah. I've said, and everything that's popping out. I've got a collab with uh these guys from LA, um, super cool song. Um, can't wait for that to come out, which is probably like later on in the year, but. Yeah, man, music is yeah. music can be so much better than it is now. Yeah. But, but music is really your side thing, right? Right, right yeah, now, acting yeah. is your main acting thing. Acting is the main. So, thing. what what about the acting industry now? Acting industry, um, film industry, <laughs> <laughs> the, film the acting indi- industry, the acting industry. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, the film industry. Uh, it's 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 a system, and it's 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 like a recurring system, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the whole well, just don't get me started on love teams, man. Like, oh yeah. I mean, honestly, <laughs> what? Wh- why? I mean, <laughs> like, like that's all I gotta say. Why? What? Yeah. Like, it's like, dude, like it, it, it just shows how limiting that is. Like, yeah. it, I mean, it works and people love it, but like, people get such a such an image, like, oh man, they work together in one movie. Are they together in real life? They have to be, right? Yeah. No. There's no barrier. Like, yeah, there, there and, isn't a barrier. And, and life. Like, yeah. And I, f- I, it, I find it strange to still. Yeah. I mean, it's limiting to the actors, especially like it shows their versatility when they can pair up with different people. And like, it's, 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 it's something new to the screen. And like, yeah. it's not like the same, the same stuff, thing, you know, yeah, like, you yeah. know how they act together, you know how they are together. Like, like it's like, for example, if, if, okay, well, Catherine actually had a movie with another guy, but, Imagine Danielle doing a movie with another girl. Yeah. Be refreshing. That would be interesting. That would be refreshing. Yeah, that would you know? be nice. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that's the, that's how it works here. And don't fix what's not broken is their yeah. motto. So, um, I mean, if I was to ever be put in a love team, I'd be like, this isn't like a forever thing. Like, yeah. I want to be allowed to work outside of a love team because that's, I mean, like, it's it's, it's only here. It's restricting. It's restricting. Yeah, it's, it's restricting as a talent. It is. Like, Man, <laughs> it's just like, oh, it lets me down. But yeah. obviously, I mean, I'm still grateful for all the opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> but like, those are just my personal thoughts on the industry. Um, uh, but the film industry itself, as I've said, is growing artistically. Yeah. Um, and that's what I really love. All these outside of the box uh, concepts are coming out. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I ho- I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful yeah. for this year. We'll have, we'll have a better... <laughs> Yeah, it was a pretty drastic start, but yeah. 2020, um, hopefully we'll be good. Definitely. Cheers to that, man. Cheers, man. I'm pretty much done. Now, I know you're not a, a book reader, but do you have any book recommendations? This is what we do at the end of the show to, you know, book recommendations. Books that helped you along your journey. It doesn't have to be like non-fiction. It can just be any book, really. Uh, def- oh, well, either... You know what's underrated? I feel like it's underrated because the movies were complete shit. I feel the Percy Jackson books. I knew you were gonna say that, man. The Percy Jackson books, Percy Jackson, dude, they're they're so good. The books, yeah. Rick Riordan, what a fucking author. I'm swearing a lot now. Sorry, (laughs) my brother was yeah obsessed with that too. Dude, I'm telling you, it's so good. Like that's it's it's a close second to Harry Potter in my opinion. It is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I read a lot of um, Roald Dahl when I was a kid. That was like, that was super. Roald Dahl? Yeah, Roald Dahl. What a dude. name. Yeah, man. <laughs> Roald Dahl. I think he's no reason or something, but like. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I would definitely say Percy Jackson. Give them a read. They're really good. Percy's good, man. Percy's great. Well, um, John, um, it's great to have you on the show, man. Cheers, Paul. Thank you uh, for baptizing these mics, you know. Yeah, I know, mate. It's been, uh, very Brand good. new mics. Yeah. I've spat all over yeah. them already. You know, you, you, you're you a part of the mic. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, mate. Oh. You <laughs> forgot.